Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a late night Friday night update. I know it's kind of late here for an update, but hey, better late than never. It is still July 4th, 2025 here in California, 11.17 p.m. Uh, obviously Saturday for quite a few folks. And uh, watching uh, the earthquake activity around Japan still ramping up. I know a lot of folks thinking, um, you know, that prophecy that was uh, supposed to take place here in July some speculation that someone had mentioned july 5th obviously um you know that's pretty much out of the ball game right now for the date there in japan i'm not for sure exactly what the time is over there in japan right now or if it's uh into the six or not um but um no mega quake uh, and again this prophecy that was supposed to you know foretold of a big earthquake around japan and the philippines is supposed to be for july 2025 so nothing going on today as far as mega quake activity goes there's still quite a bit of earthquake activity though including the 5.4 that would make that five pointer the third largest here uh, i believe in the last 30 days in that area of japan bring up the largest magnitudes here i'll zoom into this area yeah so there's a well it matches a 5.4 that occurred back on June 28th. Uh, so regardless there, it's, it's about the, the third largest in the sequence of events out here. Uh, still got a number of earthquakes out here. I know the USGS only showing four earthquakes on the map, but we go to the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency there for all the quakes. And we're still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity out there. Uh, a bunch of fours. I didn't do a count, I did not do a count here today, but looking at the numbers, they're roughly the same as what we've been seeing here over the last few days, several days, uh, where there's probably, uh, you know, close to 100 earthquakes or so that struck in the last 24 hours there across the Japan region. And you got to remember all these twos and threes and fours. And I, I did have a good question here. Someone asked me that, uh, you know, there's there's been a bunch of... Uh, bunch of fours out there right bunch of fives kicking up there as well so um the question is is all these earthquakes here relieving that potential strain that that may offset the 8.0 or larger earthquake here for this area of the nankai trough and you know that's pretty much a myth uh you know sometimes they'll, t they'll say that in school or you might hear it from a geology um a teacher but there's no way even a hundred or a thousand 5.0 earthquakes is going to relieve the strain uh, that an 8.0 can can um, release. So a magnitude 8.0 earthquake releases roughly 32,000 times more energy than a magnitude 5.0. So look at this. It would take 32,000 magnitude 5.0 earthquakes to release the same amount of energy as a single magnitude 8.0. The math is there. I'm telling you, like I say, we could have, and we've only seen what, four, five, maybe six five-pointers in the last 30 days in this area. So, uh, And all these bunches of fours and threes, they don't really matter. All, all that matters here is that we're still continuing to see a buildup of pressure in the area. That's why this earthquake activity is occurring, because of increasing strain in the region, not because of lack of strain. Let me tell you, this whole area is underneath uh, you know, a big old pressurization event here. And um, again, no major quake yet and uh, you know if one wants to think about that prophecy here i'm not going to go into it you know I'm, a lot of people already know about it um that was stated for july so obviously we just started july let's see what happens uh, i'm still continuing to keep an eye here on this earthquake activity uh that's striking there into the uh, japan region uh, again adjacent sea of the uh, tokara island tokara islands the last one here 2.7 uh, let me double check that and see. Yeah, 2255 here. So just about half an hour ago uh, in this area. Uh, some further movement up north here. Let's see what we got for the newest activity. 4.8 there into the Japan Trench. Uh, some activity down there across the Taiwan area as well. Fairly recent. Again, still putting this area, you know, in, in the prime zone for some big earthquake activity. 
But, uh, yeah, I've seen quite a few comments there about, uh, you know, people thinking, well, look how many earthquakes they've had. It's probably the equivalent of an 8.0 already. But, no, that's not the case. You know, they, they can have um, hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes per day uh, for weeks at a time. And that will still not even be, you know, a fraction of what an 8.0 can do as far as releasing uh, the pressure that's been built up out here. That stress. All right. Um, but really, um, that's about the only area here of elevated activity still right across this area, uh, western area of the Pacific Plate into the Filipino Plate there. Also over here across the west coast, still getting a little bit of activity there uh, with uh, a new earthquake. Where's that uh, earthquake at? Well, this one here is from this morning, uh, 4.2. I'm kind of curious to see if the tremor activity is stirred up there following that uh, event. Let's see what we got here. Still got fireworks going off like crazy here, man. Uh, Cascadia tremor, nothing. And it's been that way uh, over the last week here with really not a whole lot going on. Just 120 epicenters of tremor. And this comes after a, a decent amount of tremor here back in May and um, early June. But now things have completely died off. And uh, whether that's bad news or not, we'll have to watch that. One earthquake up here around home, Washington, west of Tacoma. Uh, also another earthquake over here, two-pointer, closer to the uh, coast range. But these are fairly deep earthquakes underneath the area, uh, more likely associated with stress along the Cascadia subduction zone. These are not fracture earthquakes. Uh, Northern California, a couple smaller earthquakes out here. Nothing, uh, not seeing anything big. A little bit of movement here off the Hayward Fault. Uh, it's a little bit closer here to the Calaver or the Concord Fault, northern end of the Calaveras Fault here. Outside of Concord, a couple smaller earthquakes there today around noontime, including a 2.6. Uh, some activity here on the San Andreas Fault. Looks like a couple ones and some twos. Uh, there's some earthquake activity underneath the San Luis Reservoir again. That's a little concerning, right? Because, uh, oh, well, I think we had a little bit larger quake than that. Was it a 3.3? They must have downgraded that. Either way, it's directly underneath the lake and um, not good. Uh, the fault system there that it occurs, occurred on uh, is relatively slow, slippy, uh, slow slip type of fault system here. So it takes a long time for buildup. And it's been a long time since we've had a big earthquake out there. But now we got a lake and a reservoir and a dam. Um, right there across that fault system. That's not good. Sounds like a big war going on outside here around me. Crazy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Um, Southern California here. Let's see what we got. Anything above 2.5? Well, latest earthquake south here into the Baja California area. Previous to that, 2.5 offshore where we got a little sequence of events here. Uh, really no main quake. It looks like there was 1.7 previous to 2.5. Uh, a couple twos in there. A little uncertain on to which fault system that is. Um, there's a number of them here. Looks like it's uh, around the Palos Verdes Fault. Maybe over here across the Cabrillo Fault. Uh, either way, a little bit of activity stirring up. The southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, specifically on that section, quiet. But we are getting those stress quakes right off of it right where the bend is and right where we expect you know the, the strain quakes to show up been uh, quite active down here across this area recently uh, but for now no big earthquake activity remember back in uh, 2019 we had the july 4th july 5th uh, earthquake activity down there across ridgecrest 6.9 on the 4th and then one day later 7.1 i believe uh, there on the 5th today a different story but uh, I can't believe it's already been, well, that's been six years already. Wow, that is crazy. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview here, see what we got cooking out here. Not a whole lot of anything uh, from what these uh, seismographs are showing us. Pretty quiet uh, for earthquake activity. Uh, some wind, maybe some thunderstorm activity earlier, it looks like. Uh, but uh, for the most part, things are pretty quiet out there. Let's take a look here at the uh, rest of the earthquake 3D globe. New Zealand quiet. Again, most of the new activity here right in the Japan region. 
and over here across the west coast. It does look like there's been some larger activity here into the Baja California region with a 4.1 recorded. Now, uh, USGS not showing that four pointer, so it's a little bit further down the line here, but it does look like we're starting to get some adjustment there south of the Southern California region. So watch that. A lot of times this will migrate northward uh, when we see activity within this zone. So we could see an uptick there in Southern California here overnight, tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Puerto Rico, a couple threes out there, nothing big. Some older activity there in the um, way down south, uh, off the tip there of South America early this morning, 5.6. Uh, one four-pointer out in Greenland area. Been getting a swarm of activity here recently. No big earthquake activity, but uh, a little bit more busier than normal. 3.5 out there around the Mediterranean. And, uh, you know, for now, we'll just keep an eye there on the Japan area. It's... it's uh, Still got quite a bit of earthquake activity occurring around it. Space weather. Well, oh, look at that. It keeps going lower and lower. B4.8. Pretty soon we'll be in the A category. <laughs> I don't know if it ever gets that low or not. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty crazy. We do have a number of sunspots out there, as you can see here. Uh, but they're all fairly stable or decaying. Not a whole lot of new ones popping up here. All the ones that are currently facing the Earth are uh, not even capable, I don't even think they're capable of producing any flare activity. Seafler uh, is at 85% chance, but look at the Mflur, 10% chance. Wow, it's been a long time since I've seen it that low. Crazy, no major roars there in the forecast. Yeah, a little prominence eruption there, it looks like uh, yesterday, but that is directed away from the planet. As far as Storm Prediction Center goes, um, let's t take a look here at uh, Saturday to start off the weekend here. It's a big old slight risk category up in Montana, uh, Wyoming as well. Again, those thunderstorms and the wind, it is going to show there across the Yellowstone seismograph stations when they stir up. So we'll see those darker blue lines again tomorrow. Uh, got a hatched area for some damaging wind uh, up there outside of Billings. A little 2% chance here for some tornado activity as well. So just a heads up, uh, it is in the typical zone here for summertime where those storms uh, are way up north here. And it looks to be the uh, well, it looks to be the story here over the next couple days. Nothing major going on, though, as far as any significant severe weather event. Uh, big old fire down in Southern California. Hopefully we don't get any major wind events, but this thing has taken off like crazy. Look at this northern line here and the southern line of satellite-based heat imagery. Uh, this fire is going strong out there. Uh, let me see if we can look at one of these cameras here. Oh, yeah, that's lit up uh, pretty crazily. Um, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, let's see what we got here for coverage. We got, uh, oh, wow, 70,000 acres there for the uh, fire area 10 percent containment it's uh it could easily burn south here for a good distance you know i don't see a whole lot of uh trees out there but i'm sure there's vegetation some dry vegetation that's uh burning up out there nowhere anywhere near you know any major populated areas for now on the south side uh north side you know, I'm sure this is this is all backcountry down there in Southern California. I'm sure some folks have uh, some cabins and whatnot out here. But far as any populated areas, I'm not seeing it. That is good, but that is a big old fire. That is, uh, the, you know, I believe that's the largest one so far out here on the West Coast. Number of other fires out here as well. You know, having having fireworks going up in the air all over the place. Probably not good. Get some new fires starting out there. These are all lightning caused here over the last week or so. But, uh, man, we got uh, a bunch of fires out there. I was just checking my field out here. I got dry vegetation out in the field, making sure none of these uh, aerials that are going up from the uh, illegal fireworks here in California are landing in my yard. I don't need that catching on fire. So uh, just giving a quick glance out there, making sure nothing's smoldering. I even wet down the area out here just 
just to keep everything damp you know just in case things do fall out of the sky uh, another earthquake up here along the curl cam chatka trench 4.7 that's another area here that subduction zone, uh, subduction zone that's uh, I think that's got some potential here for some mega quake activity as well you know this what we've been seeing here over the last uh, this is just the last week here you know you have to look at a couple main areas where all this earthquake activity is occurring for one right but also the quiet zones that have been building up the steam for quite a while that's a nankai trough there uh and also you got another subduction zone here i don't know if this whole thing could rupture at one uh big event or not uh, i mean that i don't think it ever has historically but if it did that would be some big bad news uh, but i am watching this area here in between uh, taiwan and the swarm and from the swarm over to the nankai trough the izu trench here is fairly primed as well up at the surface level of the subduction zone uh, there's been uh, not a whole lot of historical large earthquake activity here so that could be another prime spot um, the japan trench pretty active but I, it, the last big one happened back here in 2011 that nine pointer so i don't think we have enough strain built up here for a mega quake the curl kamchatka yes uh, that does have uh, quite a bit of strain out there. Been building up on it for a while. And, of course, this latest earthquake way north here at the northern end of that uh, subduction zone. That's a big one. That can produce some big earthquakes. So we'll just kind of watch things, see how they go, see how it goes, folks. Uh, I've seen a lot of comments saying, well, look, that was a big old nothing burger. Nothing happened here today. Uh, you know, and from what I see, I didn't go reading everything about it but uh the prophecy was stating that there would be some event here between japan and the philippines with a major uh tsunami and earthquake um for the month of july 2025 the specific date of the fifth i believe that was associated with somebody else uh that for uh, you know foretold of something big happening out here so either way you know unless this completely goes away we're still looking at a potential for some large earthquake activity out here uh, you know you think about it there's been no large event associated with this earthquake swarm here so that right there just tells me things are you know they're uh, they're quite compacting out here the pressurization is at a great level uh, across this zone right now all right folks i'm going to try and call it a night um, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet uh, one earthquake on mendocino the japan station there that where that earthquake swarm is occurring is on this one here this seismograph station so when you're on the live stream it will look something like um, like that so from there you'll see um, the Japan station right here and then there's another Japan station over there a little bit closer to Tokyo but uh, yeah with everything going on got to keep that uh, monitored uh, anyway folks have yourself a wonderful evening and uh, I'm, I'm gonna call it a night I'm pretty tired We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for the uh, Saturday morning update.